With the release of HoneyBook's Automation 2.0, there's a lot of new features you can do now within HoneyBook. So let's go over how to use Automations 2.0 so that you can start adding automations to your HoneyBook. And if you're new to HoneyBook or haven't signed up yet, definitely make sure to check out my link in the description below for 30% off of your annual subscription. HoneyBook is a great addition to any business. It's the way I'm able to run my wedding photography business and get my clients in and easily communicate with them, especially when it comes to automations. Now, automations, in my opinion, is probably the most important thing you can do for your business, especially if you're like me and you're running your business by yourself. Having to do everything all the time is just such a time suck. I have a wife and five kids. I have things I need to do. We homeschool. I cannot sit here and regulate every single email that is coming into my CRM. That's why setting up your HoneyBook automations is extremely important. So Automations 2.0 is their new conditional logic automation, and it is great. There are a little bit of cons to it, and we'll talk about those later, but let's focus on the pros and how to use it. You can see here I'm in my Automations 2.0 which I can get to from the sidebar here in HoneyBook. To create a new automation, I'll go up to the top right and click Create Automation. Now, the nice thing about HoneyBook Automations 2.0 is they've actually made a library of pre-made automations that we can go ahead and use if we'd like to. So if you don't want to start from scratch, want to check out some of the automations they have built in, they're all right here. There's a pricing guide one, and you can see when a lead form gets submitted, it's gonna wait for five minutes, send a file via email. So that's gonna be one of your smart files. So you should already have a smart file with your pricing set up. And then after that, it's gonna create a task for you to remind you to go ahead and respond to that client after this file has been sent. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones as well. We have invoice, contract and follow-up, we have kickoff questionnaires, welcome guides, and it's nice that these are all built in for us so that we don't have to go through and make all these yourself. However, if you're like me, you have a very specific workflow and you want your automation to work a specific way. So let's look at making your own automations. So we're gonna click start from scratch in the top right corner. So here's my empty automations 2.0 area for building my automation. In the top left, I can name my automation. So let's just call it test automation. And you can see we start out with a trigger. So your trigger is gonna be any action that happens that is gonna tell this automation to do something else. If I click on my trigger, I can see all of my options for a trigger. Maybe someone scheduled a meeting with me through Calendly, once that happens, that becomes the trigger that's gonna make this automation move to the next step. I can do contract form submitted, session scheduled, session ends, file complete, so on and so forth. There's a bunch of options here. And the nice thing about that is this lets you really create your automation based on what you wanna do and what stages you wanna hit. So as a wedding photographer, let's say I have someone submit the contact form. So that will be my first trigger. I can select what type of project the trigger is gonna to respond to. So again, since I was doing weddings, I can select a specific type. And then I have all these listed out in my HoneyBook, so I can choose wedding. And this really gets it so that you can customize your automation for specifically what you want to do. And you can make separate automations for each type of session you're having. So if you're a wedding photographer like myself, you can have an automation for weddings, you can have an automation for portraits, you can have an automation for families, so on and so forth. So now I have that trigger set. After that happens, nothing's happening yet. So we have to actually program in what will happen next after someone submits a contact form for a wedding. So I'm gonna click the plus right under here. And now I can choose an action. I can choose to have the automation wait, or I can set a condition. So to start out, I want an action. So for this first action, since the person is just now contacting me, I actually want to send them a file. I can choose what file template I'm gonna be using out of my templates inside of HoneyBook. So let's see, where's my pricing guide? 
Here's one here. Here's another one. I really need to clean up my HoneyBook. <laughs> Let's use this one here. And then send via email. So I can choose which email it's going to send out with that file as well. And I should have an email that I already created. Here we go, wedding inquiry reply. So now I have my email. I can preview it here just to make sure it's the correct email. And if that looks good to me, I can hit done. Now keep in mind these emails will need to be templated beforehand. Hopefully HoneyBook will update this because it would be much nicer if not only could I preview it, but I could edit this email right here inside of automations. But as of the recording of this video, you actually have to make the email first in your templates so that you can pick it here. If you'd like, you can also turn on require approval for any automation step. This means that you have to go in and basically check it off so that it will go to that next step. If not, all of this is going to be automated, which is personally what I like. So, so far in our automation, when someone submits a contact form for weddings, it's going to then send a file, which is my pricing guide, with an email to it directly to them. And then just like we did before, we want to add more steps, we would hit plus. This time, let's look at a condition. So our condition now gives us a split in our form and you're seeing a yes and no option. So now we can have different options depending on what our client ends up doing. So let's say I send them my pricing guide and now the condition I want to choose is if they schedule the session with me. We'll do any session or we can have specific sessions. I think I have a new couple meeting, yeah. So I'm gonna set it up so if they set a new couple meeting with me, let's say, let's give them five days. Or I could turn it off and it's just immediate, but I think waiting a little bit might be good for this because <laughs> we don't wanna run our couples down with too many emails too soon. So let's say five days, right? So now basically what we have is contact form submitted, immediately after that my pricing guide is sent, and then the automation is gonna pause for five days to wait and see if they make an actual scheduled meeting with me. Now, let's say they don't make that meeting within the five days. Now I can add a new automation step and let's do an action and we're gonna create an email. No, let's not do an email draft. Let's send them an email. And then I have emails that I've created like this first check-in email. So this email is like a reminder, pretty much just say, hey, how are you all doing? I haven't heard from you. I'm wondering if you have any further questions, so on and so forth. So all of this that we're seeing happens automatically. I don't have to do anything. And that is the power of automations. Now that we have conditional logic into it as well, I also don't have to go in and check in with the couple myself. I can have the automation do that for me. And that is probably the thing I like the most about Automations 2.0. With those different options, especially the condition, you have so much power in your field to do whatever you need to and have it mainly all be automated without you even having to touch anything. So again, with our condition, the next step, let's say they say yes and they go ahead and schedule that session. After that, I can choose an action, I can wait, or I could choose another condition. Let's do an action. From here, if we'd like, we can have an automated email go out that's like, hey, thank you for scheduling your meeting. I look forward to talking to you, so on and so forth. So I do have something like that in my templates. Here we go, meeting booked, thank you. So now that email will go out, and this is just a pretty straightforward, thank you for you know, scheduling your email, I'm looking forward to chatting with you. Then after that, we could wait some time, we can have an automated email go out that's gonna show them the pricing, and for that, if I was going to do the pricing guide, I would have it be set to be approved. That way, I can wait until I have the meeting with them and then just approve it for the next step to happen. As you can see, there's a lot of options in your automations for how you can build this out. However, let me show you some of the things I ran into when I was actually building out my full automation, just so you can kind of know 
where the automation is sitting currently and how far you can take it. So here's a look at my current wedding workflow automation that I'm building out. Now I have a wedding workflow automation already in the old automations, but I really wanted to move it over to automation 2.0. Now I did run into a little bit of walls that stopped me from fully building out my automation. So I'd love to share that with you all so you can see the full breadth of what automations can currently do at this stage on this day when I'm recording it. Obviously a lot of this stuff is going to be updated, but we'll see where it goes. So pretty much for this automation, I have someone submitting a contact form, getting my pricing guide, and then after a couple of days, it's gonna wait for them to schedule a meeting with me. Now, if they don't schedule a meeting with me, I'm gonna check in with them, and then three days later, we're gonna look for another condition, which is gonna be that they book with you yet. Now, no, then I move them to the ghosted pipeline. <laughs> this just lets me know the couple's probably not going to get back to me because from my experience, I've seen that if a couple doesn't get back to you within the first two or three emails, then they're probably not getting back to you. So that's kind of a lost cause. So I made a stage in my pipeline called ghosted, or you see my little ghost emoji there, and it moves it to that stage for me. And then it will send a final email check-in. We have another yes, no. If it's no, automation ends. Now, ideally what I would like is that if they say yes in any point in this stage, I need them to actually be pushed back to the main line of yes from did they schedule a meeting. Unfortunately, at the moment, there's not a way to do that. But essentially what I would like is that if a couple submitted their form, they didn't book with me, let's say they get the first check-in email, and then they do book with me, this yes would bring them back here, which is my main automation line, which is gonna include the full breadth of yes, yes, they're booking, and so on and so forth through on to their wedding. So I'm sure if HoneyBook is watching this, you've already seen these suggestions from others, but being able to bring a yes down on this no timeline basically, and bring it back to the main one would be nice because as you can see right now, I'm building out the same automation lane here too. And I have to build it out two or three times. So basically, if you're looking for an extremely complicated, logic heavy, condition-based automation, Automation 2.0 is not there yet, but I definitely know they will be. So you can see to explain this automation some more, let's say our couple does book, they get the thank you for booking email. Then there's basically a pause in here where once they paid their first payment to their actual pricing guide that I sent over, then the automation is going to pick up again. So pretty much the manual step between here for me is that after they have booked their meeting, I have the meeting, then I actually send them their full proposal. Then from there, the automation is going to wait for them to make that payment. And this is again where our condition comes in. What if they don't actually pay that payment? So let's say within 12 days, they do not pay that payment. Now we're gonna go to no, and we're gonna send some more check-in emails, but these emails are proposal check-in emails, not the same as you didn't even schedule with me. And again, that's what's nice about automations is I don't have to do any of this. The only step so far I took in this that was manual was me sending them their proposal after our meeting. I do that manually because again, the proposal can change per couple. I like to customize their proposals. So while I may have a single package, I do customize it for their wedding day. So if they don't schedule with me within 12 days, we hit a new email that says, hey, were there any problems with your proposal? Do you have any questions about it? Anything I can help out? We're gonna wait for five days and then I'll probably do the same, send them to ghost it and then send a final check-in. I'm gonna open your date back up because I haven't heard from you, if you're still interested, so on and so forth. However, if they go through yes, now we're getting back into my main timeline. We're gonna send them the new booking intro email, which is like, yay, we're working together now. This is gonna be great. You know, it's gonna be an awesome time. And it goes on from there. Now, one thing I did run into, which the old automations had, is they had a trigger that would happen a certain amount of days that you could do before a wedding. So let's say, 120 days before the wedding date or the project date. 
Now, Automations 2.0 does not have that option as a trigger yet, so that's something else I'm looking forward to in the future. Once I get all the features that the old automation has inside Automations 2.0, I'll be able to fix this up and actually have it run fully. As you can see, there is so much to Automations 2.0, but honestly, the old automations still work great. And if by seeing my workflow here, you're curious about what my full automation looks like now, I actually have a video where I explain it and share a full free PDF with you of my automation so you can go ahead and build your own off of that as well. I'll leave the link up above and in the description below. Also, don't forget to sign up for HoneyBook and get your 30% off and start building out these automations and grow your business up. That's the biggest thing. Like when you first start, you have kind of like a baby business. It's time to get off the milk, move on to the meat, grow your business up so you can have a big boy, big girl business that is actually running itself, saving you time and bringing you actual income rather than pulling you away from everything taking all of your time for a little bit of income. If you have any questions, thoughts, or want to know more, let me know in the comments below, and I'll link to my playlist here of all my other HoneyBook videos, which will help you learn more about HoneyBook. Have fun making your automations, and I will catch up with you all next time.